Okay, today the joint we're going to make, uh, we're just going to butt this joint right to that. And you'd see this a lot in like face frame construction where you're putting together a face frame like this. You see it in furniture where maybe a chair leg comes into an upright, something like that. Yeah, obviously going to be different uh, uh, configuration of wood on something like that. But you're going to get the idea of it. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, drop this right in here. And this, this little adjustment here is adjustable for, for different thicknesses of wood. And you want to adjust the screw back and forth to where you just feel that pop over center a little bit. So it holds it snugly. Uh, on the back side here where the business is going to take place, we just want to center up that piece of wood with the sides of the, the Craig jig before we, we tighten it. Uh, the drill that you use, cordless drills, if it's a really fast turning cordless drill, it'll work. Uh, what works better for this though is let's go back and get out the old corded drill because it, it's, a, it's a smoother deal. Uh, it drills better. You get a lot more spin to throw the chips up out of the hole and uh, this little collar right here, you're going to preset that to how far you want the bit to go through. And there's, there's some uh, arguments about where that needs to be. I think, I don't know, I think maybe Craig says that you need to blow all the way through it, which is going to be making a little dimple in the bottom of your, of your jig. And I like to have mine set, I've always, I've always had them set to where they stop just short of going all the way through the wood. So you've got maybe a a 30 second or, or so, or, or maybe a fat eight where uh, the, the bit doesn't penetrate, the point of the bit doesn't penetrate all the way through the wood. And because I don't like to see that, that little dimple down there. So what we're gonna do now, these are hardened steel guides here. The, the plastic ones that you're gonna be buying now, the wood ones, they give it the hardened steel inserts in them as well. Start the bit in. And there we are. There's our two pocket holes. And uh, our screws are going to go right in there. And where I was telling you, I don't come all the way through. You can choose to do that. Some guys do. I, I'm, I don't. Uh, but uh, this, and, and pocket hole joinery, it isn't a real new thing. Uh, doing it this way is new. This, this has come about in the last 15, 20 years or so when, it's, when it got to be really popular. But I've worked on furniture that, that's 100 years old and you'll see pocket holes done. They were done, done by hand, obviously, with a hand auger uh, where they needed a hidden hole. A lot of times aprons on table, that's the piece of wood that runs around underneath the tabletop. A lot of times those aprons were put on with a pocket hole with a screw going into the bottom of the tabletop. So it's, it's not new. It's not a new way of fastening uh, wood together. It's just a really more modern, improved way of doing it. Another thing that, that guys uh, are kind of mixed feelings about is whether the joint should have glue on it or not. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a glue and fool. I want to see glue on there. Uh, you don't get a lot of, a, a lot of glue strength on an, end glue, on an end grain glue, but you do get some. And uh, I hate to really rely on mechanical fasteners all the time or for all, all the holding power. So, like I said, a little bit of glue. Never hurt anybody. Now, if you eat a lot of it as a child, there may have been some damage. Put that together like that. And there's a lot of fancy clamps that you can buy for this. I know Craig sells several to, to hold things together. But you got to hold it together. Uh, put a little tension on it there. Make sure you got it flush. And then we're going to get a couple of the screws. And our drill set on a low speed.
And I let it slip there a little bit. I kind of had it at an awkward angle to me, but it's on there for good and forever. Uh, real quick, easy way to put stuff together. Works good, it's handy. Sand off any glues you got and you're ready to go. All right, the, the next uh, type of mechanical joiner we're gonna do here, uh, we're gonna do a, use a biscuit joiner. And a lot of you guys probably have a biscuit joiner. It's, it's a pretty common tool. Uh, it's kind of fallen from favor uh, for, for other methods here lately and there's really no need for it to. It's a, it's a good piece of equipment. It does a good solid joint. Uh, I know that these little things here, these are, these are your biscuits. Maybe they don't look like they have a lot of strength, but they, they do have more than you can imagine. Uh, these come in several different sizes. Uh, these are number 20s. Uh, there's there's tens and zeros and and uh, uh, I think there's even one that that goes down to a zero zero or something but it's a it, it can't be done on this machine here. Uh, basically, how this machine works, it has a spinning saw blade inside of it. Whenever you push it up against the the wood, the blade actually comes out. I don't know if you can see that there. The the blade just spins. Cuts a little pie-shaped slot out of the wood that's gonna that's gonna hold the biscuit. Uh, these are made out of beech that have been uh, compressed, so whenever the moisture from the glue hits them, they actually puff up a little bit. They get tight in the slot, and uh, that's that's good in some respects. In other respects, it can it can kind of hinder you a little bit. If you're using these on plywood, if you're if you're using a biscuit joint on plywood. Uh, and you're you're fairly close to the edge of the plywood and sometimes when you're not close to the edge These have a tendency to, to, to maybe telegraph through to the front side and what I mean by that is uh, Plywood being plywood uh, A lot of times on the edge. It's easy to separate when when the biscuit starts to puff up like I said It can actually push the plies away a little bit so sometimes if you're like I said if you're close to the edge you'll see the outline of a biscuit through the, through the top of your plywood. And uh, that's, that's usually a kind of a, a tough thing there. Uh, plywood, especially like a veneer plywood, like oak veneer, beech veneer, or birch veneer, or anything like that, the veneer facing is very, very thin. We're talking just thousandths of an inch thick. It's very thin. So you don't have the ability to, to sand that, that telegraphed biscuit out. So it's something you need to, to kind of be thinking about and, and careful of whenever you, you are using biscuits with plywood that, that uh, you need to have them as centered as much as you can in the board and maybe drop down a size or two than what you would normally use. Uh, the number 20, uh, I use these more than, more than any other size. Uh, and there's, there's so many purposes, so many places you can use them. You can use them to join wood like that if you'd like. The fence moves on the... On the uh, the uh, biscuit joiner in several different positions, several different angles. Uh, you can uh, just do a, a butt joint like this here to, and, and really this probably is the most used joint in biscuit joinery where guys are putting together a tabletop or what have you. Uh, if your boards are a little out of whack, if you haven't gotten them really flat or something or another, uh, if your biscuits are all at the same height all the way down through there, They'll have a tendency to level up the top of the of the wood when you're when you're gluing it together. Uh, if you've properly prepared your wood, there's no need for them in that respect. And uh, I I really don't think that when they're used that way, they add much strength to your furniture. Uh, I don't use them in tabletops. I used to, and uh, I I just I I don't use them anymore for tabletops. Uh, when you put glue in between these two joints here, like that, the glue is, is all you need for a joint. This, sure, it's, it, you can do it and it's overkill and it's not going to hurt a thing, but it's, it's not necessary. There's other joints, though, that it does help. This, this joint here, if you're doing that, yeah, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you out to put a biscuit down in the wood and set this on top of it. Uh, a lot of times I've used them when I've made 
large elaborate picture frames for customers uh, where you end up with a uh, with some material that's that's even even wider than this board here for frame material and uh, uh, the the really a lot of times there's no other way to do it uh, I've used biscuits in the miters and sometimes I'll stack biscuits I'll have I'll put them in side by side with a little gap of material in between them so that you've got if I can show you here so you've got the biscuits actually laying in like that that makes for a, a, just an incredibly strong joint and especially on a miter joint that is, it is inherently weak anyhow it really really strengthens them up uh, a lot of the the newer style kitchen cabinets you'll see uh, they have the mitered cornered doors instead of rail and style doors they'll have the mitered corners and they'll use biscuits in those but uh, what the factories are using now they're using metal biscuits uh, that, that strengthen the the uh, the cabinet mit the door miters on the on the more modern cabinets so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do I'm just going to show you basically how this machine works it's kind of messy it blows sawdust out the back end of it uh, it's got a, it does have a port on it that if you could you could rig up some kind of a dust collector on it it would help I I don't pay much attention to mess on my shop and uh, I just let the sawdust go where it will uh, you need to to get your work lined up where you want it to be this way just take your pencil and make an index mark on both pieces of wood you're gonna drop the fence on it to a 90 degree look back here at, at there's a there's an adjustment right here if we can get a get a look at that where it sets the depth of the cutter and we're going to set that on 20 because we're using number 20 biscuits and uh, we need to lower our depth here just a little or where we're uh, cutting and if you if you keep your boards oriented the same way what I'm saying by oriented face up to face up it doesn't really matter if you've got your blade centered because you're going to be putting them together the same way they were cut it's if you think that you're going to be getting things mixed up or or when you you put them together and you've got one board jacked up like that well you haven't got your blade centered if you keep them oriented the same way every time it doesn't matter where the blade falls because if it's in the wood it's in the wood so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut these two And it does have little teeth things here that are spring loaded, keeps it from sliding around sideways. I've got it lined up here on the index line on the on the actual joiner with my pencil mark. And there's the cut. And there's how the biscuit goes into it. We're not going to push it all the way in yet because I want to put glue on it. And we're going to take our other board. And there's my pencil mark on it. I'm going to line it up. And we'll put a little bit of glue in there. Now if you were you were joining this up and you wanted a whole surface glued naturally you'd have glue over the whole thing here but I'm doing this for demonstration only so we're going to push that down in there and it'll be a snug fit. Line up my marks and there it is. Now you'd put a if you were you were doing this in a <coughs> Excuse me. If you were doing this in a in a cap or a tabletop or something or another, you would have clamps on it. Everything would be glued. Uh, but that's basically how biscuit joint works. It's a it's a good way of putting things together. Fairly strong. Uh, lots of uses for it. Uh, it's a good tool to have around. 
Okay, the next uh, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to take a look at the the Festool Domino. Uh, this is the newest of the the three things here that we've gone over today. Uh, this is a very cool tool. Uh, it it's uh, very possibly worth its weight in gold whenever you're doing uh, construction of a lot of furniture. Uh, the joint that this that this uh, machine makes is called a loose tenon. And conventionally, whenever we've, you uh, you think about mortise and tenon joinery, uh, the the actual tenon is part of the wood stick, and the mortise is cut into the to the other stick that it's going to be inserted into. What a what a loose tenon is is it's completely separate from from the other wood, but it fits tightly enough that it becomes the tenon. It's glued in. And it becomes your, uh, let me turn this the right way, becomes your joint. And when that's glued together, uh, that's, that's for good and forever. A uh, conventional mortise and tenon joint is, uh, is time consuming. It, it takes a lot of time to cut mortise and tenons and make them fit correctly and get everything lined up. Uh, this is infinitely faster. Uh, the machine looks a lot like uh, the biscuit joiner and a lot of the function is the same. Uh, it's got a cutter at the front end, it's got a fence that, that lowers, uh, but it, it does quite a bit more stuff as well. Uh, there's a lot of different adjustments on it, depth of cut, uh, your fence which drops down to several different angles. We're going to set it at 90. Uh, the depth of cut, you can raise it up and down, loosening this. You've got some preset adjustments over on this side of the machine for, for your up and down cuts. The accessories for it uh, is <laughs> it's not infinite, but there's, there's gobs of accessories for the things. Different fences, I've got some other fences and stuff for, for mine that lets you position wood in different ways repetitively. Uh, for the most part, it's the way that I use it in my shop is I use it a lot like a like a biscuit joiner or a plate joiner. Uh, this the bare tool just like this. When you see the the cutter on it is completely different from what it is on the biscuit joiner. Let me pull back the the guard here on it, and you see a rotary bit here. And that is exactly what it is. It's, it, it rotates. But a round bit isn't going to cut a hole in this shape at all. So what that rotary bit does, as well as spin, it kind of wags back and forth. And you make a plunge cut just like you did with the biscuit joiner. You slowly ease it in and as that bit is wagging and spinning it's cutting you out a mortise just like this right here that's going to fit your loose tenon. Uh, the thing is just whoever invented it and Festool was the one that came out with it so they're the vendors of it but it, uh, some guy in his garage somewhere probably engineered this thing and it's just, just an amazing tool. Um, the hose on it that you see back here at the back end, that's part of the, the Festool dust collection uh, system. Uh, I've got a couple of Festool sanders, and they're they're well they're very expensive, but they're they're well worth the money. They keep the environment completely dust free. Uh, you can you can make dust off your table saw, or dust off your your jointer, or whatever. And it's not really hurtful dust. The dust that you generate with a sander, though, is, is the stuff, the real fine powder that gets in your lungs and, and tears you up. And the dust extraction system that, that uh, Festool has invented and uh, sells as part of their system is, is just is the best. I, could, I have literally, <laughs> I've, I've sanded in, in homes with, with this. We, we just redid our kitchen and bedroom. And I, I sanded with this this machine in our house, and there is no dust. It's 
it's like a 99.5% dust collection. So that's what the green hose is coming off the hip. I thought maybe you'd saw that and wanted to know what it was. The, the tenons come in a lot of different sizes. There's, there's a, a six different standard sizes. Uh, this is a little uh, sustainer box that, that uh, Festool sells and they sell it loaded. Uh, the, the tenons are, are a little pricey, they're proprietary. Festool is the only one that, that uh, makes the tenons. Although I go through a lot of the 10 to 50s, I mean gobs of them. This is the, the size that I use most on, on furniture construction. Uh, and I figured out how to make these myself, so by gum I did. And uh, these are just these are just poplar, and I've got the bits that that uh, used to make these. Cut them off the right length, and voila! I have uh, inexpensive Festool Domino tenons. Uh, there's also because you saw there was there were several different sizes of of uh, bits. There's several different sizes of cutters as well. We go all the way from the size that you saw in the machine here, which is the large size, down to this. Uh, some really small ones, little stubby ones. Uh, they change really fast in the machine. And they've got a, an incredibly long life too. These things, uh, <laughs> the one that I have in the Domino right now uh, is the original cutter that, that, that came with the machine and it still cuts just fine. So they're made out, they're made out of good stuff. They're, again, they're, anything that, that says Festool on it is pricey, uh, but uh, it's good stuff. So I'm going to, uh, I already did a joint here with this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run the machine and give you an idea of what, what it does here. Uh, we're going to do, do one of these joints here like this. And uh, I'm just going to mark both places just like I did with the, uh, both pieces of wood rather, just like I did with the uh, biscuit joiner and uh, give this thing a whirl. And the, the vacuum, the vacuum on it, it keys on whenever the machine keys on. So it's like, it, I don't have to go turn the vacuum on. You can hear the, hear the vacuum running over there. So here we go. And the, the dust extraction, I've, <laughs> I've cut a few without the dust extractor hooked up to it, and it's, it's just kind of messy. It's plug the hose in and do it, so even if you're going to cut one or two holes. And there's that one. And put a tenon in it. And there you go. And we put glue in that. And whenever the, the wood swells, both pieces of wood are going to swell. Uh, that's a joint that's, that's ever bit as strong as, as uh, the uh, doing it the conventional way with a, with a cut mortise and tenon joint. It's, it's going to last forever. Uh, can't say enough good things about this tool. So anyway, that's about it for today. That's three different ways of, of putting wood together that are a little bit different than, than what you would normally do with just plain old wood and glue and uh, clamping things up. Uh, some different ways to get some joints that, that are a little bit unconventional shaped. Uh, putting things together at angles because all these uh, the fences can be set at different angles. Uh, the, the Craig jig, if you wanted to, you could cut angled joints on the end of your wood whenever you set it in there and you can put angled holes in it as well. 
I've built angled face frames with it. Uh, works just fine and dandy. So anyhow, I guess that's about it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, watching the show. And, and this has been North Missouri Woodworking. I'm Jace Weber on CVTV. Thanks for watching.